Hi, and welcome back to A History of Clarksdorp. And in this episode, I want to tell you about Jacob de Klerk. If you go and search for Clarksdorp and the history of Clarksdorp in Google or any search engine, you will inevitably come across the name Jacob de Klerk. Clarksdorp was named after this man, but who was he? Very little public information is available. Let me tell you a little bit about Jacob de Klerk. Jacob de Klerk lived from 1791 until 1881. Jacob was the fifth of 13 children and was born on December 18, 1791 in the district of Beaufort West. On 28 March 1813, he married Anna Susanna van den Berg in Graf Renet. And from their marriage, 12 children were born. Big families in those days. In 1818, the farm Hoi on which Jacob's father had previously settled, was purchased uh, by the government to build the town of Beaufort West. And uh, his son, uh, Abram's home, became the town's first Dras Day, uh, home of the magistrate. On 30 December 1836, Jacob de Klerk arrived on a visit after a journey of 14 days by a horse-drawn carriage in the uh, Voortrekker camp at Blesberg. Blesberg, uh, which is today Tabanchu. With him was the later very famous J.C. Bainkies. Different story. After this visit, he decided to move as well. Because on April 4, 1837, Civil Commissioner Mankies wrote to the colonial office that many people, including the de Klerks, were getting ready to move. In July 1837, de Klerk advanced to the vicinity of Colesburg, where his youngest child, Elsia, was born. By August, his company was uh, pulling 30 wagons across uh, the Orange River at Alamance Drift. He moved to Natal and on 16 January 1838, he attended a tracker meeting along a tributary of the Tugela River and he and his men swore allegiance to the uh, tracker government of the time. Abram Johannes and uh, Johannes Christian, two half-brothers of Jacob, accompanied Peter Tief to Dungan at the end of January 1838, where they were also murdered on 6 February with Retief. After the subsequent murders at Blokrans and Viennen, and the disastrous battle of Italeni, where amongst others Pit Ace and his son Dirky Ace were also murdered, Jakob decided uh, Natal is not for him and he left. On 31 July 1838, Gerrit Maritz reports that the Clark and the Van Rensburgs had crossed the, the mountain. And uh, from there, uh, de Klerk camped lower along the Sand River, where he remained until the beginning of December 1838. On 16 December 1838, however, he returned to Natal, and he and his half-brother Cornelis, as well as other family members, uh, Abram and Baron de Klerk, took part in the Battle of Blood River. So, uh, big man. After he moved to the Clark, after this, he moved to Clarksdorp, where he was present in March or April 1839, when Hendrik van der Merwe recorded the farm Weisfontein, where he had lived since 1837. During a meeting in Peter Maritzburg on 7 September 1839. The Council of Representatives of the People, Volksrat as it was called, appoints Jakob de Klerk as the magistrate for the area west of the Drakensberg. He was instructed to elect 
six heemraden with uh, commandants and field coordinates. A heemraden is the uh, equivalent of an alderman in local government. Under the date 5 April 1841, Squinspreit, Jacob's spouse records the names of their children in a Bible. The district Potterstrom, under which Clarkstorp then resorted, um, called actually the district Squinspreit, came under jurisdiction of the Natalse Volksraad. And Jacob de Klerk held a prominent position of authority as the magistrate. The, also, the channel through which Pochestrum received instructions from the council at the time, and through which Peter Maritzburg reported on the disregard of those instructions on the Highveld. And at the end of 1841, Andres Pretorius hurried over the mountains to the Highveld. And he finds that in response to the Volksrat's appeal that the citizens everywhere promised to defend Natal against the English. A number of Highfelders, however, refused to do so. When the council ordered that they get no land, they expelled the clerk from his office. They held mass meetings and virtually proclaimed the independence of the Highfeld as a completely different country. <laughs> During the session of the Peter, Peter Maritzburg Volksrat of 9 October 1841, members of the Deputy Council of Potterstrom reported that uh, although the clerk had resigned at the time and uh, Pete Lowe was appointed in his place, the clerk refused to hand over the official documents to him and uh, continued issuing orders. The council decides that the clerk must hand over all official documents to his successor. The clerk probably moved to Natal from here uh, again after this because it was recorded that Alsha, the daughter, who was born on the track in 1837, um, was baptized on the 26th of December in Peter Maritzburg, probably by the Reverend Daniel Lindley, who was there at the time. In 1842, the Volksrat in Peter Maritzburg receives a request from Jacob de Klerk to establish a town on the Irlands River. He becomes a town builder. On this, the Volksrat sends uh, the clerk and uh, Johannes Bodenstein to determine the boundaries of the town and to measure plots for people to live on. It is not certain exactly where this town would have been, but according to a letter from Robert Moffat to Sir Harry Smith, written in January of 1849, it was at Majur's Drift on the Irlands River, thus in the present district of Harry Smith. Due to the occupation of Natal by the English at the time, this town, which would have been called Friededor, never came into being. The restless de Clerc then moved to Urgstad. During this track, on March 23, 1845, on the Drakensberg, his wife once again wrote the names of their children in a Bible. In Urgstad, the clerk also plays an important public role in the public life. In um, an announcement of the council uh, resolutions of the Urgstad, uh, uh, Volksrat of 15 and 16 December 1847, it is mentioned that Jacob de Klerk was elected a councillor. Um, at, at that stage, the Eden lived on a farm, Lagers Drift, which was recorded for him on 16 June 1847. 
on the Steel, Steel, Steel Court River. This farm was often the gathering place for military expeditions against black tribes, as well as for church services of visiting ministers. In October of 1907, by the way, the government bought this farm and allowed the, the church to establish a labor colony there. Different story. At the people's meeting held on 20 June 1848 in Urastat, at which it was decided to send an expedition to find a way to the port of uh, Yamban, Yambana, uh, Imambane, the clerk acted as chairman and he was also elected as uh, an expedition member. When at uh, a people's meeting on 19 September 1849 at Kriers Pos, it was decided to build Leidenburg. Jakob was also present. His son, also Jakob, Jakob de Klerk Jr., was the first magistrate of the new town. The Wanderlust still had not left Jakob at this point. In 1855, he set out for the umpteenth time, this time to the present day district of Carolina, as we call it, or Carolina. There, his wife died on February 1868, not sure of a date. He himself died on 12 May 1881 at the age of 89. And he and his wife were buried next to each other in uh, the cemetery on the farm Valgefonden. Apart from the fact that Jakob de Klerk is the man whom Klarksdorp is named after, he's also remembered for another reason. It is alleged that the honor for discovery of the hot spring at uh, Badplas in about 1856 or 1857 also belongs to him. Um, in view of uh, Clarksdorp's 150th anniversary celebration, Jakob and Anna de Klerk's mortal remains were exhumed in 1986 and brought here to Clarksdorp to be reburied in the garden in front of the city offices. And you can still find them if you go to where the fountain is, directly in front of the fo fountain, you will find this little monument and grave site. Anyway, that's a little bit of a history about Jakob de Klerk, and I hope you enjoyed that. If you um, subscribe, um, I hope to bring you a few more of uh, these types of uh, information about Clarkstorp's history. I'm trying to find information about Clarkstorp, which very few people know about. But unfortunately, history about Clarkstorp is very scarce and I have to source it from old residents and uh, in this case most of this information comes from an old curator of the Clarkstorp Museum called Rolf Marx. Thank you very much Rolf for this information. It is, it's really much appreciated. So there you go guys. Um, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one.